Hi, Ken here. As I think I've said before, I'm a believer that we learn by doing, so I thought a good project to learn from uh, would be something like this in Blender. Um, this is a picture that we're going to use to inspire us for this next project. Um, I thought a diner scene with a, a booth, a table, maybe a couple plates, uh, ketchup and mustard containers, drinks and whatever on the table. Outside, um, we'd have maybe some cars and, and buildings and whatnot. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'll turn our main window view back here to 3D view so it looks like the normal view in Blender. And you'll notice down here I am running a screencast keys so you'll be able to see every time I touch a key on the keyboard it will display down here or every time I click the mouse it'll display. Maybe a little glitchy because I don't think it's officially supported in version 2.78 of Blender but we'll give it a try and see what happens anyway. Alright, first let's make this window up here just a little bit bigger and we're going to change our view over to a UV image editor in this window and I am going to open up an image that we're going to use uh, to model from. Uh, if you hit this button here it'll show thumbnails and I was thinking this right here. Okay, so I kinda like the look of these red booth seats here so let's see if we can model one of these. Um, Alright, so in our view let's go into front uh, orthographic view um, we're gonna control grab our object here and snap it up so it sits on the floor and uh, that'll be the start of the base of our seat here which just looks basically like a black box I guess it's kinda flared out at the top so uh, okay first uh, I was thinking that in this scene we would have some characters sitting at the booth at, uh, across the table here so let's put an object in our scene that's roughly the size of one of our characters. Uh, that'll help us proportion this object a little bit better. Alright, so I'll put the 3D cursor over here in object mode. I'm going to shift A to add a mesh cube. Now I want to make this um, the same size as a character in our screen, I mean in our scene here, so we need to know um, the dimensions of this uh, object. So if, if we tab into edit mode, hit N to bring up our N panel, and over here, let's see, where are we? Ah, here we are. Under mesh display, under edge info, let's check length. So now it'll show us the length of our object here. Now here in the United States, we use uh, the imperial system, which is feet and inches. Um, unfortunately, if uh, someone were to tell me that something is two meters tall, I have a general idea, but it's not not really all that great. I need to know in feet and inches, so I'm going to set my units to feet and uh, in the imperial system here. So that is now showing that our object is two feet uh, on all sides. So I want to scale it in the z direction and make it about six feet. Uh, and if you hold shift you get a finer control. That's, there we go, six feet. <laughs> okay, two feet. Uh, square though is a little big, I think. So what we'll do is hit um, scale shift Z. That will scale in the X and Y but not Z. And we'll scale it down so it's about, right about one foot. Okay, so here's what we have. Uh, for the object um, that's going to represent how big a character is in our scene. All right, while we're at it, let's go ahead and we'll name this object Human Reference, and we'll name this object Seat Base. Okay. So let's, with this object selected, our seat base, let's tab into edit mode. We're going to hit numpad period so we center on that object. So when we rotate, we're rotating around that object. So let's see if we can't get this into a little bit better proportion. 
Uh, I'm going to hit A to deselect everything. Z to go into wireframe mode. Uh, B to box select, so I can select the top vertices, both the ones in the front and the ones in the back. And we'll just pull that down in the Z direction somewhere somewhere around there. Looks, looks about right. And then we'll scale it in the X direction so it flares out just a little bit. Some, something about like that looks pretty good. All right. So now in the real world, um, you don't see perfect 90 degree angles on something, right? Or perfect points like this. If you were to rub up against something like that in the real world, you'd probably cut yourself. So even though I don't think we're going to go for photorealism, in this project, uh, probably we'll probably do something a little more cartoony, I think. But let's see if we can't round off those edges a little bit. There's a couple ways we could do it, but since this object is going to be more or less square, um, you know, flat on the sides, and we just want to round off the corners, let's go to our modifiers tab and add a bevel modifier. All right, here in edit mode, you'll notice that we can still see our original object, but I mean our, our original mesh here, but the object that's being modified by the modifier is kind of underneath it. Now that's that's a little uh, that's not uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a little too coarse. So let's add um, bring up to three yeah three segments looks about right. Um, the profile uh, slider here allows you to change the profile. You can bevel something in like so if you're wanting to uh, have it beveled that way or you can make it stick out uh, kind of sharp like so but we'll leave that at 0.5 I think that looks about right but we need to make the width smaller so let's bring it on down until it looks some something like that I think looks pretty good. Let's go into object mode. Yeah I think that looks pretty good. All right so back in the front view, I'm um, going to put the 3D cursor somewhere around here, and in object mode, I'm going to shift A, add another mesh cube. This is going to be our uh, seat bottom here. So let's go ahead and rename that from cube to seat bottom. All right. So let's scale that in Z, bring it down to something like that. Let's make sure. Yeah, we're we're a little off. So from top view in orthographic, uh, we can hit G to grab, and it will just move an X and Y. And let's more or less line that up with our other object. Okay, there we go. So back in front view, pull it down a little bit it over so it overhangs the front just a hair so it's kind of more like our, our reference picture here yeah it overhangs just a little bit so let's let's bring that over just a little bit there uh, I'm gonna scale an X something about like that's probably good uh, yeah that looks about right okay that looks pretty good. Uh, let's put our 3D cursor over here. Um, I'll tell you what, so since this object down here is going to be the black base, and this is going to be the red seat, instead of adding another object in object mode, let's go into edit mode, and we will shift A, add another cube. Now this adds uh, more geometry but it's adding it to this object. So even though it is separate, if we go into object mode, we can grab this object here, seat bottom, G to grab, and you can see it grabs the other cube as well. So even though it is separated, it's still the same object. Tab back into edit mode, and let's position this a little bit better. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna select this vertex down here at the bottom. Uh, I'm going to do uh, Shift S, cursor to select it. That will snap the 3D cursor right to that vertex. Then I'm going to change our pivot center 
to 3D cursor and I'm going to hit scale X okay that doesn't work scale that doesn't work oh <laughs> hover the mouse over so since this is all one object now we can't hit A because it will select this part too which we don't want to change so if you hover your mouse over one of the vertices and hit L it will select everything that is linked to that vertex which is what we want so all of these vertices here we want to scale in X towards the 3D cursor just like so. That looks about right. A to deselect. Now if you hit B to border select and you go like this you'll notice it won't, won't select the vertices that are behind uh, what you can see. So we have to go into wireframe or the way I do it is to go into wireframe mode B box select and now you'll notice that it selects everything. Of course once again our 3D cursor was a little off center but that's that's easy enough to fix. All right, so with these vertices selected, let's change our pivot point back to individual origins. And we're going to just lean the top of the seat back just a little bit. Something about like that looks good. And then uh, scale in X because we want to make it kind of thin at the top. I think that looks, that looks pretty good. Yeah, uh, I think, I think so, something like that looks pretty good. Okay, let's go back, back into solid mode. I'm going to select all of these vertices again, go into top view, and just slide them over so they line up. About like, about like so. <clears throat> all right. Okay, so here we are at this point. Now, now we need to shape these a little bit more, right? So, so it looks like our, our reference picture here a little bit more. Now the bevel modifier won't work for this because this, this object here has smooth curves in it. So let's add um, to this object, which we've named seat bottom. We probably just need to change that to seat since we're including the back in that. We're going to add a different modifier under our modifier panel here. We're going to add a uh, subdivision surface modifier. And in edit mode, you can see our original mesh here, but underneath it you can see the modified mesh that the subsurf modifier is, is giving us. And it uh, doesn't look too great right now, so there are some things we need to do to fix that up a little bit. Um, first, let's change our views up to two. Uh, so what we view in the viewport will be the same as what it's eventually going to render out. Um, while I'm thinking about it, let's go back into object mode and give this smooth shading so it looks a little bit better. And we'll do the same thing with this object down here. Alright, back in edit mode. Let's work on the seat, uh, the bottom of the seat first. Deselect everything. Control R. We're going to put a loop cut. Uh, left click and we're going to slide it over towards the front sharpen up that front edge a little bit control R another loop cut left click we're going to slide it to the back to sharpen that up a little bit okay now from the side we want this round part on the top here but on the bottom we want it to be nice and flat so let's do control R loop cut there now a loop cut will um, You'll put a loop cut on the mesh depending on where your mouse is. It will go uh, across the edge where you put your mouse. So left click there and we're going to drag it down. Looks pretty good. Now we need to sharpen up the back. So control R. We'll put a loop cut there and bring it on back this way. Okay. Not too bad. Deselect, Z to go in the wireframe. I'm going to hit C for circle select. Click on those vertices right there. Bring them straight down. We want to be something like that, I think, in the back. So in object mode, we have something like this now, which doesn't look too bad. I think, though, that we need to fix this curve here just a little bit. 
So let's do uh, Control R, another edge cut here. That looks pretty good. Just just by doing that, it looks pretty good. Um, I'll bring it up just a little bit more to. There we go. Something about like that looks pretty good, I think. Let's do one more edge cut or loop cut right there. And we'll just lock that in place. And I want to select with our circle tool. Now, if you scroll your mouse wheel, you can change the size of the uh, area that you're going to select. If you left click, you select. If you shift left click, it will deselect. So it comes in handy. You can go along, along here and decide, well, I don't want that one, so unselect that one. But we want a, a little bit of a curve uh, to our seat here. So I'm just going to select those. Uh, you right click to get out of your circle select. And I'm going to drag those up a hair. A to deselect. And then we'll select these. Drag them up a hair like so. All right, let's see what we got. That looks pretty good for the seat bottom, don't you think? I think so. Um, all right, now let's see about the back of the seat here. So that looks kind of strange, just floating in the air like that. Um, all right, first we need to sharpen up the bottom. So let's uh, control R, we'll put an edge loop and drag it all the way down. About like that. Looks pretty good. Let's uh, sharpen up the edges too. So control R. And we'll bring the loop cut over that way some. And we'll bring another one over that way. About like so. And uh, sharpen up the top. Control R. We'll bring one up to the top. Like so. Pretty good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Not too bad at all. Um, now I do want to round, uh, round the back uh, where you would be sitting against just a little bit. So uh, let's put. If you roll, if you initiate a loop cut with Control R and you roll your mouse wheel, um, you can add multiple loop cuts. You can do as many as you want. Um, I want to do. Huh. Yeah, let's do three. So we'll just lock those in place. <clears throat> now, let's see. This one, if you alt right click, press G twice, GG, and we can slide that down to right about there. I'm going to hit Z to go in the wireframe. C, unselect those. And these we want to pull forward about like like that, I think. Yeah, that looks that looks pretty good. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll leave that for now. Um, let's round off the back a little bit. So we'll hit A to deselect, and we'll select these right here. Pull them out a little bit. Select those right there, pull them out a little bit. All right, let's see what we have here. Uh, looks like we need to pull this out some down here too. So let's have one more loop cut right there. We'll deselect those, pull these out a little bit, a little bit more like so. Let's see what we got. I think that resembles because it looks like it kind of, yeah, it looks kind of like it goes up a little bit and then it kind of curves a little bit more towards the back. So I think that looks pretty good. Not too bad, I don't think. All right. All right, let's, let's fix this at the bottom here. So I'm going to hit L to select all of that. And I'm going to hit G to grab and Z. So we're constrained to the Z axis. So now if we move left and right, it doesn't move, but it only moves up and down. So I want to move that down so it more or less touches our base. And let me try something here. What if we Alt right click this bottom loop here? 
and shift. Okay. Hold on. Okay, we, we do we have that bottom loop or more or less selected. Let's see. See if I can get in here. Okay, I think I got the whole bottom. Okay, wait a minute. Shift tab, go to edge select mode. I'm going to unselect that edge. And shift select that to unselect it. Because I only want that bottom loop there. Okay back into solid view and what I want to try is instead of adding another loop cut to sharpen that up a little bit I want to increase our mean crease value here weight used by the subsurf modifier let's zoom in there and move our mean crease up and see what happens here there we go make that Put that right at one. Let's see what we have here. There. I think that looks pretty good on the bottom. All right. Let's see about doing the same thing with the seat base here. So I'm gonna hit A to unselect everything. Let's see. I'll Alt right click that loop and let's see see what our whoop. <laughs> Alt, right click that loop, Z, let's see what we got. Okay. Shift, Alt, right click. Shift, Alt, right click. And Shift, Alt, right click. There we go. Alright, we finally got that bottom loop there selected all right go back in the solid mode and we'll do the same thing with that we'll increase our mean crease I'll put it all the way up to one Let's see what it looks like that looks pretty good I think all right let's take care of this gap between the seat bottom and the seat back here go back in the tab mode I mean go back <laughs> tab back into edit mode I'm going to go back in the vertex select. We'll get all those. And in front orthographic mode, if I hit G to grab, I'm only going to move in the X and Z axis, not in Y, which is what we want. So I'm going to grab that and just kind of position it like so. I think that looks about right. Now this in the back here. Let's see. We'll go back into edge select mode, and just like that edge, and let's see what happens if we increase the, the increase of that edge. Nope, that's not working. Okay. All right. In this case, then, back in the vertex select, let's add another loop cut right there. Control R, loop cut. Okay. liking that so well. Let's see. That looks a little too square to me. <clears throat> so let's see, what can we do to fix that? Alt, select that, hit X, and we are going to uh, delete the edge loop. 
Yeah, was, I think that made it look a little too square on the edge there. Um, maybe that's not too bad. Well, we can always play around with it later if we want to. We'll, we'll leave it like that for now. Okay. Uh, select all those. Well, select a vertex there. I'm going to shift S cursor to selected. Make sure it's right at that vertex. Change the pivot point to 3D cursor. Uh, L select all that. I'm going to scale in the X direction to make this hang over the edge just a little bit, like so. So it kind of matches our, our reference there just a little bit more. Okay, now we've got these white stripes on the uh, on the seats here. Let's see if we can do that real quick and then we'll probably that'll probably be the end of this video. Alright, a couple ways we could do it. Here's uh, a good way I can think of. First let's get our camera out of the way so it doesn't obstruct our view when we're trying to look around. So we will in object mode select the camera. Hit M to move it to a different layer and we'll move it all the way down here. So now our object is on this layer, our camera is down here. You can always shift select so you can see multiple layers, but this way the camera will be out of our way for now. Um, so let's go back into edit mode where you're going to alt click uh, I'm going to shift click and I want to get that vertex there. Um, Yeah, I think, I think that looks good right there. Okay. So now in edit mode, I'm going to hit uh, Shift D. That will duplicate our selection there. I am going to hit Y to, because it's in transform mo um, mode now, so it'll move around. I'm going to hit Y to lock it to the Y axis and just move it out to the side here. Um, then we'll hit P to separate by selection. So now this is a separate object from this. Uh, with, I'm going to select that object now and we're going to rename that uh, maybe Stripe. That sounds good. <clears throat> okay, so that is going to be what we're going to make our Stripe out of. Let's, um, let's see, we'll go Object, Convert to Curve from Mesh. So now this object here is no longer a mesh, it's a curve. Now under our curve uh, tab here, let's change our fill uh, from half to full. All right. Let's kind of zoom in on that, our curve object there. And um, let's uh, raise our extrude. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Okay. We're going to extrude it out just a little bit. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on one second. Um, resolution. Let's make uh, three. Wait a minute. Let's put our extrude back in. We want bevel depth, I think. Yeah, there we go bevel depth. Zoom in there. So here's what we have if we look at it from end on the end. Um, we've now changed our curve into uh, a little tube here which is uh, just what we want. Okay. Um, let's see. Resolution. I don't think we need to go any higher than three probably even two. Now, let's stay at three just just because. Okay. This is going to be our stripe. And since we copied it from the geometry right off this object, it should fit right on, on that edge there. Uh, we may have to make some minor adjustments. Uh, first, Let's move our the center 
or the origin of this curve object back to the the object. So um, let's see. Uh, okay, wait a minute. We need to go back to object mode under object. transform origin to geometry. That puts our origin back to the center of our geometry here, uh, which is what we want. Let's go to, uh, we'll change our pivot point back to individual origins, so it moves our manipulator back to the object. And now we can slide this object back over and it should match the profile of our seat there, more or less. Okay, to make this a little bit easier to see, let's select our seat object here. We're going to go to materials. Um, let's change our render engine from Blender render here. Let's change over to Cycles render. And let's add a new material. And all we're going to do for right now, we're not going to do too much with it. We're going to just change our material. Uh, well, we can hit the eyedropper here and actually change it to the the color of our reference image here. We can always change that uh, later on. And then if we go to let's see, texture no material material view down here, we can see <coughs> the color um, that we just uh, applied to our object. So let's go back to our stripe object. We're going to give that a material. And um, that we're just going to make uh, just pure white. There we go. So, so, so now we can see it a little bit better. For good practice, let's go back to our seat object here. We're going to name this material seat. And grab our stripe. And we'll name this stripe. Okay. So. Alright, let's zoom in on our stripe here and we can see we have a little bit of adjustment that we need to do. Um, I think from... I think that's right about where it needs to be. So let's go into edit mode. I'm going to grab this last vertex down here. I'm going to hit E to extrude and we'll just bring that straight down to the end here like so. And looks about right. Well, yeah, you see it's off a little bit. Um, Okay, everything needs to be moved just a little bit so it stays in contact with our seat. So what I'm going to do is hit O, which is the same thing as pressing this down here to allow proportional editing. And if you hit G to grab, you'll notice now that it moves the whole thing, not just the one vertex. So let's hit G to grab, use the mouse wheel to scroll in and narrow our area of influence. And I'm going to move that just like so, and then we'll grab this up here, move that down just like so. Alright, that looks a little bit better. Let's see how we're doing at the other end here. Alright, looks like if we grab that, uh, zoom in a little bit. I'm going to constrain this to the z-axis and bring it down a little bit about like so. Then I'm going to hit uh, O to disable proportional editing. Hit G, Z, and just bring, whoops, got another vertex here at the end. Shift select that one. I'll just grab the Z handle and move both of those down. Shift to deselect that one, move this one. That doesn't work out so well. So what I'll do is uh, hit E to extrude. Just bring that down and see. Whoops. Nope. 
Nope. <laughs> uh, let's see. S to scale? No. It's not shift. Nope. Control S? Nope. Um, Alt S? Okay, yes. Alt S. You can scale the, uh, the points of a curve. So we'll scale that down a little bit. Grab it. Move it down there. GG to edge slide this one maybe a little bit. Alt S, scale it a little bit down. This one, Alt S, scale it a little bit down. And this one, we'll just extrude and kind of bury it down at the bottom there. I think I think that looks good. Well, that may take some fiddling around with, but. I won't make you sit there and, and watch that whole thing, but there, we have a stripe done. Now in object mode, if we hit shift D, that will duplicate it and it's in transform mode. So I want to lock it to the Y axis and we'll just slide it over to the other side. So now we have our stripe on the other side. Alright, um, I think this is a good stopping point for now. When we come back, uh, next time we'll make the stripes for the back here and maybe we'll talk about proportioning this object although it looks pretty good but we want to proportion it so maybe a little bit so it more matches our human reference figure here okay pretty good start but I think that's long enough uh, for this video so come back and join us in the next video we'll see you then